Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at Starfield on the Asus ROG Ally, and we're going to touch on the Steam Deck a little bit, uh, but the Steam Deck isn't going to be the preferred handheld to play on this one, unfortunately. Uh, as well, there is going to be one setting that you're going to want to change regardless of what platform you're on. Uh, at least changing up from low is going to make a big difference in image quality, and we'll get into that. So first things first, getting into the settings and like kind of going over what they are exactly. Uh, a few things to note, FSR2 does appear to be bugged right now. So if you do change your settings uh, without FSR turned on and then turn FSR on afterwards, it does appear that FSR doesn't actually fully kick in. Now, in order to kick in FSR fully, you'll want to set the graphics preset to anything, uh, low, medium, high, ultra, whatever, because every graphics preset has FSR built into it, either from a 50% scale up to a 72% scale, I believe, for the render resolution and that brings me into my next point of just understanding how fsr2 works in this game so you'll see at the top there there's drs or dynamic resolution yeah that will be turned on alongside fsr2 then your render resolution scale that will be your equivalent of fsr performance balanced and uh, ultra performance whatever so it goes all the way from 50 percent up to 100 percent. so you can scale all the way down to 50 percent, which i believe is actually less than or no more than what uh, FSR performance or ultra performance will allow. So even if we had uh, proper FSR built in with the performance and ultra performance qualities, uh, I think we might see a little bit of a gain there, Just but uh, in most situations, we're going to be CPU bound. So anyway, getting into my recommended settings, the one key setting here that you're going to want to make is the change to indirect lighting. Now, anti-aliasing appears to be tied into indirect lighting for some reason. I don't know why it wasn't given its own setting. Uh, uh, it does appear that like the sharpening and stuff so anti-aliasing would work through fsr2 uh, and it's built into it. So the anti-aliasing is done through FSR2 through the upscaling. But you'll see that the indirect lighting somehow has an effect on how objects are aliased in the game. So you can see here from the stairs, uh, setting it to even just medium indirect lighting, the stairs are immediately brought up to like amazing, pretty amazing quality, I'd say, of just like the non-jaggy lines. And that's what I mean by aliasing. So the aliasing is those jaggy lines on a straight line and it's definitely more noticeable at lower resolutions on top of having FSR thrown on that it can make for a pretty rough experience so if you have it set to low this is what it'll look like and those stairs can look pretty haggard as well you'll notice in some parts of like just even your ship uh, walking up to your ship or just looking at like random kind of ladders and bookcases and stuff and just ra objects in the game so having at least this setting turned to medium will get you a very clean image from what we're able to work with in my opinion so now my recommended settings are actually high indirect lighting uh, particle quality medium uh, that is gtao set to medium and then grass quality set to medium and motion blur turned off and then we also have fsr2 set to 50 percent dynamic resolution scale those are my recommended settings vrs off and film grain intensity off completely turn off film grain sharpening you can play with i have found and what i had been using in all test footage have been sharpening at 50 percent i found on the handheld screen sharpening at 50 percent is kind of the sweet spot uh, whether you're on the steam deck or on the rog ally okay take two this is the second time i recorded this now because the whole first time i was talking the microphone was not live apparently so getting things started we're going to the starfield testing 17 watt with settings test so for here i was testing just straight up low 1080p seeing what we were getting and then i was just doing my settings adjustments from there so you can see the high indirect lighting high indirect lighting medium gtao uh, etc so now we can see here that uh, going from 1080p to low to my high indirect we actually gained fps strangely enough these were all three run averages uh, so every group of bars here that you see for every slide was a group of three runs so three, six, nine, twelve runs there even, and then the, another three on top of the 720p custom. So yeah, it's been a lot of testing. 
and I'm just kind of over it at this point. So getting into it, so we're seeing here that uh, high indirect, high indirect, uh, medium GTAO, we're getting pretty much the same FPS averages. So there's really no uh, uh, impact uh, to the CPU or the GPU uh, because at this point where you're running in the new Atlantis run, uh, my custom new Atlantis run that you'll be seeing in the background here. And it, it's gonna be a CPU bound scenario. So when you're running around on like the moon and planets and in combat, you're gonna be more GPU bound. So when, when you're in interior scenes, you will be getting 60 FPS at times, uh, even over at times, depending on what you're running wattage wise. Uh, but there's going to be scenes uh, even in combat or planets, uh, as IGN noted in their review, that there's planets that will enact some slowdown similar to the slowdowns found in New Atlantis, and it'll bring up that CPU limitation. So this game goes from being CPU bound to GPU bound in uh, like a manic friggin' <laughs> episode, really, at times. So it really what I would say and from what I've seen from reviews and from what I've seen reviews on the the one review that mentioned that they played uh, the the beta or the review period on the Steam Deck and they were getting 20s in the New Atlantis area and the New Atlantis area was kind of this big scary zone that you're not going to get above 30 FPS in on the Ally or the Steam Deck so I'm just focusing my testing on there and then expect much better performance gameplay wise going from beyond there. So going from my high indirect medium GTAO 720p to 1080p, we can see that we gained about three FPS from just going from 20, 1080p to 720p. Uh, so now going to my 720p custom. So what I did for this was set everything to low to get that FSR to kick on for the preset. So you use preset low and then move everything up from there. So we can see here that we get a 30.6 FPS average uh, compared to 29.7 and the 1% lows and 0.1% lows were actually a little bit better as well. Uh, so the one thing to note with this game though is unfortunately if you want to change the resolution you have to change the resolution from the desktop. You can't change the resolution in game and have it full screen. So that's a really big knock against this game because honestly in this day and age that's such a pedestrian problem to have as a developer I feel. But maybe it's a limitation as a creation engine, uh, who knows. So anyway, going on to my new Atlantis benchmark run, custom settings, uh, 15 watt all the way through up to 30 watt. We can see that we're basically gaining about two FPS each kind of increment that I increased it here. Uh, obviously going from 20 to 25 watt, we we did only gain another two FPS on that. So past 20 watts is kind of like the point of diminishing returns really. Um, up until you get to like the 30 watts. So if you're going to be playing handheld, my recommendation is to not go below 17 watts. 17 watts is gonna be where you wanna keep it at. These are all running at 720p. Sorry, I forgot to write that down on the haste of making this benchmark chart. So anyway, uh, doing straight 720p benchmarking from the 15 to 30 watt. Again, we can see that we're getting our my handheld play of 30.6 and then my docked play of 36.3. So you're gaining a little bit of FPS from going from my handheld mode to my docked mode. Uh, but honestly, in the Atlantis area, you're not going to be getting above 40 FPS often, if at all. Uh, there's like only in really kind of select scenarios where you're going to be getting high fps but yeah you're going to be pushing around like the 25 to 35 fps mark depending on your settings uh depending on your wattage and everything now we can see here going to 30 watts uh, and I did here 720p, 900p, 1080p uh, with my custom settings. So we can see here at 1080p we got 36.3 and then 900p we got 34 FPS average and 1080p we got a 33.3 FPS average. So the biggest uh, gain or loss I guess would be from the 36 to 33 from going 1080p. So split the difference when you're playing handheld 900p is actually a kind of fine way to play uh, but 900p at 17 watts isn't really that feasible so honestly 720p at you could try 900p but honestly just expect that lower performance in the kind of non-action scenarios but there will be action scenarios where you will be dipping below 30 fps as well so just keep that in mind 720p might be the safe bet here for the handheld mode now this one's going to look a little confusing or quite a bit confusing i apologize uh so to break it all down the top or the top third is four gigabyte vram 
the middle is 5 gigabyte VRAM and red is auto uh, VRAM settings. So these are all 30 watt mode testing, uh, but we're doing 720p through 1080p uh, and again, custom settings. So again, these are all three run averages. So what I'm kind of looking at here really, uh, auto, we're just kind of right off a bit. But one thing to note about auto is it did kind of keep up a little bit with the 720p uh, versus the 720p in uh, 5 gigabyte VRAM there. But we can see that going to 4 gigabyte VRAM, we actually lost compared to auto and uh, 5 5 gigabyte but then going from 900p 1080p we actually matched or beat in the uh, auto versus 4 gigabyte but then going to 5 gigabyte we matched at the 1080p but then we also beat at the 900p so uh, the vram usage in this game to my knowledge or from what i've been testing it used up to about four and a half gigabytes at most from what i saw it was actually about 4.4 gigabytes of vram used so i can comfortably say that you probably won't need above five gigabytes even at 1080p at 1080p that's when I saw that 4.4 gigabytes, uh, 720p, it was just under just over four gigabytes. So you're not really going to use much beyond that. Even with the XG mobile at 4k, we're only using about like seven gigabytes in these bunch run scenarios, 7.8 gigabytes or so from what I was monitoring. Uh, but anyway, so my recommendation here would be absolutely set it to five gigabytes. Uh, if you're running an XG mobile, you're going to have to set it to auto. So you get that 16 gigabytes full of system RAM. So that's one of the banes of the XG mobile owner's existence uh, is having to flip from auto to the dedicated uh, five gigabyte or four gigabyte VRAM. So what I have to end up doing is switching from auto back to five gigabyte when I want to play handheld or if I want to play on the XG mobile. It's a hassle, but it is what it is, honestly, at this point, because we're stuck with the 16 gigabytes of system uh, RAM total. So now we can see here talking more about the XG Mobile. We're going to do 3080 versus 6, uh, 6850 versus the Ally. So again, same color coding, red, green, blue. So the Ally is yellow, uh, the 3080 is green, and the 6850 is red. So we can see here at 1080p at my custom settings, uh, same settings across the board. So we're just kind of doing a like for like scenario. Uh, we can see here that we basically almost doubled our FPS going to the 3080, but not quite so much with the 6850. We actually lost quite a bit of uh, almost 10 FPS on the 60. 8850 versus the 3080 and this is only a 1080p so the vram issue should not be coming into play here and interestingly enough there is an amd patch specifically for starfield which there is not one for nvidia there to my knowledge in the patch notes and everything and the recent updates the driver updates for nvidia there has not been a specific starfield update so i think they're being i, I don't know what's going on but the amd is supposed to be running better but also one thing to note that if you're pushing it up above ultra or to high to ultra there does appear to be some bug as reported by daniel owen i'll link his video below but basically what he found uh, very quickly is that when running an nvidia versus amd card if you're running ultra uh, there was a significant performance drop going from nvidia to amd but then when you're running high that's when the nvidia was kind of coming meeting it or exceeding it in places again i'll link his video below a uh, really excellent channel if you're into like pc graphics cards performance analysis things like that but he, he does a pretty good deep dive on the star field just on the desktop side as well uh, but anyway so moving on to the 3080 uh, versus 6850 straight uh, just high settings preset with no motion blur we can see here that uh, 1080p and 1440p is going to be what we're going to want to gun for really with these cards 3080 you could pull off 4k uh, but again like that's going to be dropping wildly from like 30 to honestly 100 fps at times uh, depending on the scene so it, with these gp use yes you can hit well above 120 fps in certain scenarios so if you're in those interior scenes or uh, some of the more desolate planets but when you're in the heavy cpu bound scenarios like this where we're only limited to a 30 watt cpu chip that's when you're going to feel these uh, kind of performance uh, degradation from this honestly so uh we're not really too much gpu bound in these scenarios we're more so cpu bound in in this scenario specifically again i want to stress that so we are pushing the gpus as much as we can just by pushing up the resolution and everything like that but again at the end of the day the biggest bottleneck here is the cpu in this scenario so then finally, uh, speaking of bottlenecks, we're going to move on to the RG Ally versus the Steam Deck. So again, using my custom settings, we can see here, I apologize for not marking this one off, but the top two is the Ally and the bottom two is the Steam Deck. So we can see here at 15 watts versus 15 watts on the one gigabyte uh, VRAM with no cryo utilities, we can see here that we gained about two FPS on the RG Ally versus the Steam Deck. But you'll see here that that's why I'd recommend using no, no more or no less than 17 watts, sorry, to play. No less than 17 watts to play Star 
starve wield on the ROG ally to get those averages up a little bit higher. Uh, and then going to the Steam Deck, we can see here that even going to four gigabytes with cryo utilities installed now, we've gained a 0.9 FPS average and lost on the 1% lows and 0.1% lows. So uh, really at the end of the day, Steam Deck is not going to be the optimal way to play this game. But again, if you're going to play it on the Steam Deck and you're going to play it on the Steam Deck, from what I've seen and from what I've played briefly, yes, the space scenarios, the interior scenes, some of the planets, uh, some planets will be heavy on the foliage again, as mentioned in that IGN review, they did say that the heavy foliage planets will enact some of these slowdowns that you find in New Atlantis. Yeah, so to wrap everything up completely, uh, Steam Deck isn't my preferred way to play, and I'm sure it's not going to be many people's preferred way to play in this one. Uh, but if you are playing on the Steam Deck, then by yeah, by all means, try out the settings and see how they work for you. Uh, you should see pretty decent performance again in the interior scenes and the kind of lighter combat. But when you get into those heavier combat scenes or those kind of heavy flora fauna planets and stuff like that, that's when you'll see those slowdowns due to the CPU limitations on the Steam Deck. Moving over to the ROG Ally, we do see. Uh, positive performance increase obviously with the newer generation of the APU uh, we do get increased clock speeds for the CPU and GPU thus allowing us to obviously run the game a little bit better uh, and having the 15 to 30 watt range to play with does help out as well again when you're running at 30 watts you're still going to probably be dipping down to maybe sometimes into the 20s even in New Atlantis uh, you're not going to get a solid 30 FPS out of this game all the time. But what I would try and recommend to do would be to set a 30 FPS cap and then just run it like that. Honestly, cap the FPS at 30. And if you haven't seen my CPU boost video before, I'll link that below. Uh, so very shortly, uh, if you do cap your FPS to a 30 or 40 or whatever with, that you can keep it sustained at, uh, if you have CPU boost on, you will be killing your battery. Uh, this is the one kind of scenario where CPU boost off will help you is when you're running at a capped FPS scenario. So if you want a very easy way to do this, instead of doing like the whole edit and everything that's in my video, you can use G helper and install that. I'll link that video down below as well. Um, and you can use that to basically activate CPU boost on and off on the fly. And then you can either use the built-in uh, ASUS uh, FPS limiter. Just make sure you set that FPS limiter before you start the game uh, and as well you can use rtss uh, that's rivia statistics tuner or tuning statistics server sorry uh, and you can use that in conjunction with msi afterburner that's how i have my performance overlay stats here i'll leave those linked down below in the comments as well uh, with rtss i didn't have it linked here but you can use that in the control panel to set an fps lock and it's completely user friendly uh, it's just in the bottom right tool panel they have to bring up and then you'll You'll see the FPS lock there and the RTSS symbol. Uh, but anyway, so to kind of cut up all my rambling here, uh, as always, I'll just thank out my channel members. Uh, so that's Roy Watney or Roy Wayne, I believe, Darkstar, Amoa, Rika1217, and Joey VR. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. Every penny that comes into it uh, is directly put back into it and then some. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't thank you guys enough. As well, I can't thank everyone for taking the time to watch this or share this or just let people know like hey check this guy out or whatever like hey use this guy's settings or whatever you know like and even if like hey look at this idiot he doesn't know what he's talking about sure do that too it doesn't really matter to me at the end of the day but as always i hope you all have a great day